All right, guys, let's continue on with our uh, um, rational expressions. We did in the last section multiplying and dividing rational expressions where basically you would just factor everything you possibly can and uh, then, then reduce any common factors in the numerator and denominator. So today we're going to switch to um, adding and subtracting. This is, if, you're, if you want to follow in the book, page 449, it's section 29.2. Um, and I just want to remind you guys, think about the difference... Um, you know, from when you, let's let's just say if we want to add or subtract fractions, right, it's really not as simple as multiplication would be, right? If this was a multiplication problem, it would just be 6 over 12, you know, multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and then we could, of course, uh, reduce that. But with, uh, with addition, we do need to get ourselves a common denominator so that we can add them. So um, I'm kind of looking, you know, look at the denominators. 3 and 4, what's their least common multiple? And sometimes it's just their product, right? So 3 times 4 is 12. And then it's just a matter of asking yourself, what did you multiply by um, to get from the original denominators to the new ones? So um, this first term, the 3, had to get multiplied by 4, so that's what we need to do up top. And the 4 over here needed to get multiplied by 3 to make it 12, so that's what we got to do up top. And then now we would be able to add straight across the top and uh, keep the denominator as uh, 12. Okay, so keep that same concept in mind. Um, we're going to, of course, throw some variables in and have some more fun with this, but uh, it's going to be the same, same concept as what we did there. So let's take a look at a few examples. These are um, the ones on page 450, I think they are, in the book. We'll do the first four or so together um, and then let you guys practice a bit. These were 3 and 4. We just used 3 times 4, right? We used 12. Okay, so here is our problem. Um, let's say we have 3 over x plus 1 minus x over x minus 1. And again, the deal is to add or subtract, we need a common denominator. So I'm really just looking down at the denominators first. And, and in this case, like neither one's factorable. Um, they're both just kind of two separate things. They're their own factors. So what we're going to do is just use both of them. Okay, and we're going to use the product of them both as the common denominator. Okay, because they didn't have anything in, in common. It's exactly what we did in the in the previous problem, right, when it was uh, the denominator. So we're just going to use, in this case, x plus 1 times x minus 1. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. You know, look at the top row and look at the denominator um, and compare it to this denominator, right? So originally up top it's just x plus 1, but we needed to have an x minus 1 as well. So that's what we're going to multiply the top and bottom both by. And then same thing, this, this term on the right, it had the x minus 1, but it did not have the x plus 1. So we need to multiply top and bottom of that right term by x plus 1. <clears throat> and now we'll just uh, we'll kind of distribute out what we have, okay, um, up top. So we have 3, actually let me just write it this way for right now, 3 times x minus 1, and here we have x times x plus 1. Okay, and now here's going to be the, the tempting part. To, or the thing to avoid, you're going to want to cancel these things because we're used to kind of uh, of reducing. And why is this not letting me move the page at all? Okay, like for example, it might be tempting to say, well, can't I, can I now reduce the x minus ones here and the x plus ones here? And I mean, technically, algebraically, you can, but if you did that, it's just going to get you right back to what the original problem was in white up there. So avoid that temptation. Let's not do that. Um, let me get rid of those. Because what we want to actually do is we, we multiplied for a reason because now we have this common denominator and we can write this as one single fraction over the common denominator x plus 1, x minus 1. And now let's simplify what we have. So in the numerator, um, I'm going to just multiply this out so we can combine any like terms. So 3x minus 3. Um, and then just be careful. We do have a minus here. So we're minusing x squared. And then we would, we would actually be minusing x. Because right? again, that, that minus sign there is, is counting still. Um, so now it's just a matter of are there any like terms in the numerator that we can uh, combine for our final answer. Let's see what we got here. So I, I know the, um, the denominator set as x plus 1 times x minus 1. Um, if we just write these in uh, standard form, put the biggest exponent first, negative x squared. Um, combine the 3x minus x to be a plus 2x, and then we just had the minus 3 sitting there, and uh, that would actually be a, how we could leave this thing, okay? It looks a little messy and whatnot, but uh, it's, 
it's it's a single fraction now, right? We 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 combined two separate fractions into a single fraction. Okay, so let's take a look at a second example. Um, this one, um, the the one denominator on the right there is actually factorable, right? So we can uh, just like before, you always want to factor, meaning I can factor an x out and have x minus three as the other factor. And then now if we look at the denominators, right, take a look. This one has the factor of x. This one has a factor of x and an x minus 3. So I can see that the term on the left just needs a factor of x minus 3 um, to make it the same denominator as the term on the right. So we're just going to multiply top and bottom by um, x minus 3. Okay, um, the common denominator is going to be x and x minus 3. The, uh, the left term, let's go ahead and just distribute that out so we can combine it with the other like terms. So 2x minus 6 uh, minus this 3 here didn't need to get multiplied by anything. Right? It already had the denominator we wanted it to have. Okay, so now if we just combine, um, let's see, our, our denominator is x and x minus 3. The numerator, if we combine those like terms, 2x minus 6 minus 3 more um, should get us 2x minus 9. Okay, and the directions may say something like uh, list in the excluded values. So um, just like we've been doing before, those are the exact same um, restrictions or excluded values are any values that make the denominator zero. Because again, you can never divide by zero. So just looking at the final answer, we can see that x cannot equal zero um, and x cannot equal three. Okay, those would be the restrictions. Like either uh, if we if we grafted vertical asymptote or whole, all that stuff we've been doing uh, from before. All right, let's do a couple more examples here. So this one, um, 2 over x squared minus 4 plus x over x squared plus 4x plus 4. And again, the deal is we want to get denominators to be the same. So if they are factorable, let's go ahead and factor them. So the x squared minus 4 is the difference of perfect squares, x plus 2 times x minus 2. And the, uh, the term on the right, x squared plus 4x plus 4, is that one factorable? Um, it actually is, right? There are factors of 4 that add to 4. This is the O of x plus 2 times x plus 2. So let's start thinking about now what would we need to use as the least common multiple, basically. So um, I'm going to start over on the right here. This one has two factors of x plus 2. This one on the left had 1. So if we need to take the least common multiple, you're going to need to use the one that has more. So our common denominator is going to have to have two factors of x plus 2 and then also a factor of x minus 2. So let me write it out and I'll talk about why we needed to use that. Okay, well, We're actually going to use both x plus 2's and an x minus 2. Okay, so both terms, that's going to be the new denominator. Okay, And the reason I needed to use those was or is <clears throat> um, I can make, let's see, I can make this become the uh, become all of this if I were to just multiply by another x plus 2, right? It's missing one more x plus 2, isn't it? Okay, I could not, if I had only taken one of the x plus 2s in the denominator, <clears throat> I would have trouble making this one have fewer x plus 2s in it. That's the problem, right? So you always want to take the one that has more if they share factors. Um, but what we do need to do to the term on the right, it just had x plus 2 and x plus 2. It needs the x minus 2 factor as well. Okay, so that's what we're going to have to multiply top and bottom by. Okay, so I'm just going to write it out. You can distribute it ahead of time if you wanted to. Um, but now we're going to be able to simplify the numerators, combine like terms, and get this problem over with. So let's see what we have. And I'm just going to write it as one, one combined fraction now because they have the same denominator. Okay, it's the x plus 2, x plus 2, x minus 2. And let's just start simplifying. So that guy is going to become 2x plus 4. This guy, since it's a plus, it's just going to become plus x squared minus 2x. And then if we just simplify the numerator one more step, we should get a final solution of, let's, let's keep that denominator the same. And let's see, what do we combine into? I see an x squared up there. 2x and a minus 2x actually cancel out. Um, and then just the plus 4. 
Okay, and be careful, that's not factorable. X squared plus four um, is not factorable. So we would leave it just as is. Um, this one, of course, would have two restricted values though as well. Looking at the denominator, we know X cannot equal negative two and positive two. Okay, and again, anything that's making that denominator zero, you're, you're generally gonna wanna state that on the side as a restricted value. All right, and let's do one last one. Um, X over X plus two plus four over X minus three. Okay, so looking at these, I'm looking, the denominators are kind of just totally independent. They're not factorable or anything. So in that case, we're just going to have to use them both, right? X plus 2 times X minus 3, right? X plus 2 times X minus 3, right? Because there's no way to factor them or anything. So um, we're just going to have to multiply the left term, top and bottom, by X minus 3. And the term on the right did not have the um, x plus 2. So we'll multiply top and bottom by x plus 2. And let's uh, just kind of distribute out and see what we get. So uh, x squared minus 3x plus, over here we have 4x um, plus 8. And if we can simplify up top, Let's see, standard form, we would do the x squared first. Um, combining minus 3x plus 4x would be plus x. And then the plus 8's just sitting out there on the side, and that would be it with restrictions of x cannot be, looking at the denominator, x cannot be negative 2, uh, and x cannot be 3. Okay, so that's a few examples. Um, feel free, read through. There's some others in the book um, earlier in the section. Again, it's 29.2. Um, or if you just YouTube search... Um, you know, adding and subtracting rational expressions, they'll kind of walk through the process, or feel free to uh, email me with any specific questions. And uh, that's that.